There you go. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, welcome. Welcome here and uh, welcome in, in Facebook world. I'm being told to move over. Am I in, in frame? <laughs> yeah. You're good. Good. Well, thank you all for waiting. Uh, South Asheville traffic has um, made it such that we waited about 10 extra minutes to get going here. Uh, but I am Dr. Michael Trayford. Uh, welcome and, and welcome everybody out there. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a lot to talk about tonight when it comes to laser and the brain. Some really cool things to talk about here. So we're going to get right into it. And um, light heals the brain. Light is, is what brings life to everything, right? Plants, animals, us. Uh, and we can concentrate these sources of light to make a difference in people's health and, and people's lives. So that's what we're here to talk about and really the science behind something called photobiomodulation. What is photobiomodulation? We'll talk about that in just a second, but when we break it down to its component parts, it's really about light impacting every cell in our body for the better. Uh, specifically today we'll be talking about low-level laser therapy, which is a form of photobiomodulation, uh, very likely the most popular form of uh, and most effective form of photobiomodulation. So my name is Dr. Michael Trayford. I'm a board-certified chiropractic neurologist. Uh, what is that? Uh, board certification like any other health specialty. So we work with the nervous system, but a bit differently than conventional neurology. We understand the nervous system as conventional neurologists do, but our applications are such that we try to help restore function, build function, repair function in brains that have been injured and in brains that have been uh, degenerative in, in conditions and also to in just life, people looking to live a uh, higher quality of life. Um, so that's me, I've been at this 20 years. Apex Brain Centers has been around for about seven years and we do some unique intensive programming for uh, traumatic brain injury, adulthood learning and behavioral issues with an emphasis on addiction and compulsive behaviors, cognitive decline, and also to peak performance. So that's, that's what we see. So photobiomodulation, what is that? Photobiomodulation, photo meaning light, bio meaning life, and modulation meaning to have an influence on. So basically it's the ability to influence pretty much every cellular process, um, our bodies and our brains through concentrated sources of light. Light amplification, that is the first two letters in laser, so LA is light amplification. We can take certain types of light, we can add power to it, and then we can also add some other things and we can have very specific um, concentrated impacts on the nervous system, but the body in general. So wavelength plus power plus frequency. These are the things we're going to talk about when it comes to laser and it's really important to understand because there's a lot of different types of laser and no two lasers are created equal. So we're going to get into some of that. There's really a lot to cover so I'm just going to keep it mostly to uh, class two low level lasers and we're going to talk about these types of lasers um, and then we're going to touch on some of the others as well and answer some questions if, if anybody has them. So low level laser therapy or cold laser, there's a reason for this word cold laser, the obvious being that it does not produce heat. We're gonna get into specifics about different types of, of laser as we go along here. So the visible spectrum of light, you have all the way down here, these super, super short wavelength gamma rays and here are these much longer uh, radio frequency or, or, or radio wavelength uh, waves of light. And then we have the visible spectrum right in between ultraviolet and infrared types of light. So we measure this area and all areas for that matter in nanometers, NM. So we have about 400 to about seven, 800 nanometers is the visible spectrum of light. That's your, you know, Roy G. Bibb. Remember that, you know, red, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, indigo, violet. I think I got it right. All right. Um, so that is our visible spectrum and that's where therapeutic laser falls. Now there are lasers that fall outside, particularly in this range, that are more surgical based lasers. lasers. They create a lot of heat, they cut, they cauterize, they, they remove things, they injure tissue or uh, basically um, get rid of damaged tissue. We're talking about visible spectrum which is more in the realm of photobiomodulation, helping cellular processes in the body become better. So this is the deal, visible spectrum, and really our sweet spot right here, I circled this and wrote that in, 635 nanometers. Now a nanometer is super, super small. 
it's a um, it's a billionth of a meter. So that's it's pretty tiny, right? We got a meter, yay big, um, but a billionth of a meter. So these are tiny, tiny, tiny waves that we can harness and we can introduce into the body, into the cells, into the blood, into the brain, into the muscles, and we can have an impact therapeutically and physiologically. So 635 nanometers is one of the wavelengths that we use in our particular laser that we have in the office, which we'll talk about, um, but where a vast majority of the research has been done from a therapeutic standpoint. We're going to talk about that some of that research. I'm going to try not to bore you to death with it, but it's really important to understand what's happening in the realm of Alzheimer's, um, brain injury, and um, depression, multiple sclerosis, all of these conditions, immune function, what lasers can do to boost function, and it's all over the literature. A lot of people are really unaware of the healing power of light or lasers, and uh, the fact is it's, it's really well uh, rooted in the literature. So, visible spectrum of light is where we're at. So, class four versus class two lasers. When you go to a chiropractor, physical therapist, uh, there's a lot of folks in the um, cosmetic realm that are using lasers these days, all different types of lasers. Uh, tattoo removal, things like that. Obviously, tattoo removal, you're burning tissue. You're getting rid of things. So you need really um, high-powered lasers to do that. Want to understand the differences because what happens is photobiomodulation or biomodulation typically occurs primarily with class two lasers. That's where we work. That's our, our sweet spot, so to speak. And that's where we see the therapeutic benefits that we do with laser. Class four lasers, are used in a lot of muscle and joint injuries and things like that, but the deal is class four lasers are photothermal, meaning they produce heat. Class two lasers, low level lasers, um, are photochemical in nature. They create chemical changes. They biomodulate. They have an influence on cellular function because they are not heat producing or damaging, okay? Uh, because sustained heat can damage tissue. Uh, the fact is class four lasers can be very effective in certain types of injuries. Um, and other conditions, but the, the, the deal is we can't keep that type of laser on an area for a long period of time like we can a class two laser. Longer wavelength typically, usually 900 or so plus nanometers more in the infrared or near infrared range, which is much higher than that visible spectrum that we talked about. The class two laser, shorter wavelength, about six, um, where we're at is about 630 to 640 nanometers. So, uh, this is a, a shorter wavelength, but this is the deal here. Class four lasers, typically high power measured in watts, okay? Class two lasers, low power measured in milliwatts or thousandths of a watt. So we may have a high power laser that's 17 watts, or a laser like we use, which is 17 milliwatts. That little M makes a big difference because you're putting much less power into the system to have a greater impact. Now, human thinking is, you know, more is better. The more the merrier. You hear these terms thrown around. Uh, you know, with cars, you know, the bigger the engine, the bigger the, the better the performance, all that kind of thing. The fact is, when it comes to the therapeutic effects of lasers, class two lasers, because of this, by and large, low power, is where they have their therapeutic benefit. So you're giving the body really just what it needs so it can do what it needs to do from a healing perspective. And we'll talk about some of those uh, those healing properties. Class four lasers, if left long enough, can cause damage to soft tissue. Uh, and obviously burns can be a side effect of those. They have to be monitored uh, constantly. Uh, no soft tissue damage, no side effects with class two laser. The particular company that we use, Arconia, um, with this FX35, uh, 635 laser, this can be left on for long periods of time. You know, we have certain therapeutic limits where after a certain point you're not getting the benefits anymore. But the fact is we could leave it on all day and it's not going to create burns or tissue damage. So that's really important to understand. And no side effects as well. Uh, they've been doing research on this particular piece of equipment and other lasers in their, in their arsenal for the better part of uh, you know, 20 years or so. And there really have been no um, documented side effects. So that is, that's pretty darn cool when we have uh, a therapy that has no side effects because most therapies have some sort of side effect in some populations. So, effects of photobiomodulation or low level laser therapy or cold laser therapy. I'm not a big fan of slides with a lot of writing on them, but we have to write this out because I really want people to understand and have the information um, to understand what these types of lasers can do for them. 
So the fact is, uh, we have uh, enhanced metabolic activity and energy production within brain and body cells. So this is really important where uh, metabolic activity, it's every chemical process in the body. Cells produce energy. Uh, they, you know, they, they, everything happens within the cells. The mitochondria of the cells produce energy. They're the powerhouse of the cells. If we can influence that through uh, concentrated sources of light, some really cool things can happen. So energy production, if you've ever heard of ATP, uh, adenosine triphosphate, it's, a, uh, it's basically what we use to produce energy within the cells. And it has been shown that low-level laser therapy boosts ATP production. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, so many people are low energy, lethargic, you know, insomniac. They can't sleep. They can't uh, move well. They can't uh, just get through life. They're barely getting through life. And uh, a little bit more energy would, would be uh, very impactful for them. Neuroplasticity, the, the cornerstone of what we do. Low-level laser therapy promotes neuroplasticity, connection between nerve cells, learning in the nervous system, um, but also, to neurogenesis, production of new nerve cells or brain cells. So, neurogenesis, uh, you know, up until 10, 15 years ago was considered nonsense, but the fact is we can create new nerve cells, and we do throughout life. Um, so this is huge that uh, low-level laser therapy has been shown to produce new nerve cells. Lots of studies looking at that. Uh, production of stem cells and key factors for brain and body health. Uh, stem cells, we know what they are. They produce other types of cells in the body, including nerve cells. Uh, there was a pretty cool study I'm going to look at uh, where they did uh, low-level laser therapy on bone marrow. And what happens was produce stem cells that were able to uh, decrease uh, symptoms in things like Alzheimer's disease. So you don't even have to go right to the brain to treat things. You can treat through the body, and we're going to see uh, certain studies that, that prove that. So key factors in the brain and body that are produced with low-level laser therapy, BDNF. If anybody read the book Spark by John Rady, he talks about... Um, this being miracle growth for the brain, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It causes nerves to come together and, and connect with one another, and, and it, it promotes learning within the brain, particularly in the hippocampus, which has everything to do with Alzheimer's, right? Because it's memory. <clears throat> so BDNF and VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor. Low-level laser therapy raises these chemicals in the body, so we produce uh, blood vessels more effectively because of the VEGF, we connect nerve cells more effectively because of the BDNF, and we produce more nerve cells because of neurogenesis. And that's just a kind of a sampling of what the impacts of laser therapy are from a cellular perspective, and really more um, important for what we're talking about here when it comes to brain health. Improved memory, learning, and mood because of a lot of these other factors that we're talking about. Uh, increased blood flow and oxygenation blood flow, my goodness. Uh, the brain has some of the smallest blood vessels in the body and it's on the other side of the blood-brain barrier. So if we don't have good blood flow, one of the first places to feel that or the effects of that is going to be the brain. So if we can enhance blood flow, particularly on the other side of the blood-brain barrier, uh, some pretty amazing things can happen. So oxygenation, uh, increased oxygen comes with more blood flow. Tissue repair and regeneration comes with more blood flow. Where does this come in handy in the brain? After a brain injury, after a stroke, even concussion, where brain tissue is damaged and it needs blood, it needs blood badly uh, to repair and regenerate. Uh, efficient cell signaling and communication, another effect of uh, low-level laser therapy or photobiomodulation. Um, antioxidant production, glutathione, things like that. Uh, you know, you hear about nitric oxide, all these types of chemicals that are super important when it comes to the brain to do what it needs to do and also get rid of the junk that builds up in the brain, right? So we can increase those with laser. Uh, removal of waste products from cells as well. Enhanced immune function. Plenty of studies now showing <coughs> increase in certain types of white blood cells, increase in certain types of, um, you know, fighters within the immune system that can help protect against foreign invaders, but that can also get in check in conditions like multiple sclerosis when the immune system is attacking the nervous system, right? So um, we can see impacts with low-level laser therapy, not just an immune response and fighting invaders, you know, uh, bacteria and viruses and things like that, but also calming down the immune system when it comes to 
attacking the body like it does in autoimmune disorders. Everything from thyroid conditions to uh, multiple sclerosis, ALS, things like that. So uh, pain reduction, that's one of the, um, the first areas that was looked at and still continues to be the dominant area in the realm of low-level laser therapy. This particular laser here, which I'll show you in just a bit, uh, has FDA approval for things like heal pain due to plantar fasciitis for low back pain, uh, much more effective than uh, typical medications that are given to just reduce the symptoms. And the fact is the long-lasting results are there. Uh, so it's helping reduce pain, but also to lower dependence on prescription medications, opiates in particular, uh, but also the benzodiazepines and other things that people are using when they have pain. Uh, benzodiazepines being uh, things like Valium for anxiety. You know, when people have pain, they're not sleeping. Um, they you know, and other medications can cause aspects of anxiety where they need more medication to control symptoms. So helping to lower dependence on prescription medications, particularly lethal medications like opioids. I just saw something yesterday uh, that opioids just surpassed motor vehicle accidents as the leading cause of, uh, uh, of death in this country, aside from chronic degenerative diseases like heart disease and things like that. Um, that's pretty significant. And also too, obviously, along with that, decreased rates of surgical intervention. We decrease pain, decrease medications, decrease surgeries. Uh, there are emer uh, emergency rooms in certain hospitals now using laser, um, and this was news to me. I didn't really hear about this until just about six weeks ago where somebody I knew went to the hospital and they got a laser treatment in the hospital, uh, which is phenomenal because that should be a first line of defense, mm -hmm. not the opiate, not uh, anything else. It should be laser, ultrasound, all these things that can help, particularly pain conditions in a hospital setting. So who benefits? Obviously, we talked about the, uh, the effects and, and what it can have an impact on, so we just extrapolate that into who benefits. Traumatic brain injury, concussion, and stroke. What's involved here? Damage to the brain, inflammation. Uh, we need to get rid of stuff that's, you know, the bad stuff that builds up when we have these types of injuries. Uh, so low-level laser therapy due to increased blood flow, oxygenation, neurogenesis, all of that helps any kind of injury to the brain. Um, cognitive impairment, dementia, and Alzheimer's. Some really cool studies we'll talk about in just a moment to show how laser is impacting these, and in advanced stages too. So if, it, if we can help in advanced stages of these types of things, we can certainly help before these things become an issue, which is the ideal situation. Uh, so we'll talk about laser prophylactically or preventatively, uh, using it to um, stave off possibly and also to improve functions so that if we do get into something like dementia or Alzheimer's, maybe the results won't be as catastrophic had we not done anything. Uh, and then there's other influences, diet, exercise, stress management, sleep. We look at all of these factors, but the, the deal is this is what we're talking about here is laser. Uh, but just that alone, the, the results are pretty staggering. So mood disorders and addiction. There's uh, studies with laser and depression, laser and anxiety, ADHD, all kinds of things, bipolar disorder. Uh, disorders of development, learning, and behavior, including ADHD and autism. If we can improve cell signaling, if we can improve... Um, you know, oxygenation, if we can actually focus laser on certain parts of the brain that are under functioning, for example, in ADHD, the right prefrontal cortex is usually the culprit. It's all over the literature. There's challenges with this area being weak because of possible developmental issues, traumatic issues, etc. So if we can start to harness now uh, or focus the laser a bit more specifically in areas of the brain that are under functioning, then we can boost metabolic activity in those areas and hopefully start to see changes in learning behavioral issues. Again, it would be a heck of a lot better than having to live a life on a stimulant type of medication or other medication to control attention issues. Uh, and these are being measured by um, laser being done to people and then cognitive testing showing better impulse control, uh, better self-regulation, better decision making, better attention. So these are not things that uh, are, are subjectively being looked at. There's very heavy objective markers. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder, seasonal affective disorder, light, you know, this time of year, it's, it's, you know, people are struggling right now. Uh, why do we get, you know, all kinds of things happen this time of year. People are generally a bit more um, sad, a bit more uh, withdrawn, uh, especially after the, you know, the new year when all the parties are over. A lot of people are forcing themselves to parties at the end of the year just to kind of get out, but most people this time of year are a bit more to themselves. Uh, also, too, immune function is down. You know, this is flu season. 
Is it, it, it you know, is it a coincidence that it's this time of year when people are indoors a lot, they're not exercising a lot, generally eating very poorly? So this kind of confluence of things happens. But if we can introduce light, which is missing to a significant degree, days are shorter, people are inside, we can absolutely have an impact on seasonal affective disorder and post-traumatic stress, depression, things like that. Neurodegenerative diseases, some really cool studies here uh, with these types of lasers, you know, including the one that we're looking at, which is, um, has some trials in the works for, um, for Alzheimer's disease. Actually um, having an impact on the plaques that develop in the brain. Uh, decreasing the stranglehold of these plaques on the nerve cells in the brain so that the nerve cells can do their job in transmitting information. Uh, but also, two, reduction in the plaques. This is huge because there's no medication right now that can reduce the plaques in the brain. Uh, this is really the greatest hope. Uh, Low-level laser therapy, photobiomodulation, optogenetics, you know, getting light into the brain very specifically to create change is really the greatest hope for any type of neurodegenerative disease because there's really no good treatments out there for any of them. Insomnia, uh, tinnitus, head and face pain, neuropathy. Uh, we do very kind of you know, widespread treatments on neuropathy. We don't have to, we don't necessarily go in and focus the laser on, on very specific areas of the nerve unless there is a specific area that's injured. But in diabetic neuropathy, these are usually involving, you know, from the knee all the way down to the toes or from the hips all the way down to the toes. These long nerves are impacted because the damage that occurs to the blood vessels because of excess sugar in the blood with type 2 diabetes um, that now starves the nerves of oxygen and other critical chemicals. So improving oxygenation, improving blood flow decreases neuropathy. So that's huge right there. There's not many great treatments for neuropathy either. <clears throat> Pain syndromes requiring opiate or other medication interventions, skin, hair, and nail conditions, eczema, fungus, uh, dermatitis, all kinds of things respond quite well. Most of the initial work in the realm of uh, lasers was done with uh, wounds, wound healing, burns, things like that, tissue repair. So uh, cold sores as well, uh, that's something a lot of people are dealing with this time of year. Um, also, peak performers and optimal health seekers. We love optimal health seekers. Uh, you know, we love all our, all, all our patients, uh, but optimal health seekers, people that are proactively doing things to hopefully prevent what's coming their way. Um, this is really the future of medicine, in my opinion. It's taken a little bit uh, longer than I expected to get here. I've been at this a while, but uh, we want to see it get better. But um, athletes all across the board are using laser therapies, not just for their bad knees and their hips and their toes and all of that, but for their brains. So this is pretty cool stuff. All right, the research. We're going to get through this. Uh, we have a bunch of really cool papers, <clears throat> so don't mind the words. I will walk you through these. Uh, we're looking specifically right now at traumatic brain injury. So this is the research on traumatic brain injury. I just cherry-picked a couple of articles uh, or papers, I should say, uh, and understand there's a lot more in the TBI realm, in the Alzheimer's realm, in the, uh, the pain realm, there's a lot, but we, um, you know, we obviously couldn't go through an exhaustive list today. There's thousands of papers out there on all of these conditions. So, first one, photobiomodulation using low-level laser therapy for patients with chronic traumatic brain injury. And these are high-level studies, randomized controlled studies. So you have, you know, you have uh, control groups, you have impacted groups, and this is really important because we want to see how they respond comparing to a group that might not be getting the same type of, of treatment. So this was done at the, uh, the University of Sao Paulo Medical School in Brazil. And uh, this is what they say, low level, laser, low level laser therapy. And this is an ongoing study, by the way, so this is still in the works, but they're already kicking off data to show that low level laser therapy has been demonstrated as a safe and effective te technique and significantly, significantly improving memory, attention, and mood performance in healthy and neurological issue patients. I'll tell you, most studies don't ever use the word significantly. You know, when you see academic research, the word significantly is usually taboo because you know you have to have certain parameters to prove that you can use that word. So it's not a little bit. We're talking big changes in um, certain types of cognitive tests. Um, you know, looking at some of these uh, animal studies, unfortunately, you know, the, these studies are done, but they can look at the decrease in the, the damage or insult or injury to the brain in brains that have been lasered versus brains that have not. So, uh, the information is there. Transcranial low-level laser therapy improves neurological performance in traumatic brain injury in mice. 
Uh, this is from the Public Library of Science in 2013. What they looked at was the actual brain lesions and degeneration of, as a result of the brain injury. And basically what they found was, neuro, uh, was low level laser therapy increased production of new brain cells to start to replace some of the ones that have been damaged and injured. And the fact is, the brains that were lasered over time had much less damage when they looked at those brains on autopsy. Uh, that's pretty cool. Low-level laser therapy applied transcranially uh, to mice following traumatic brain injury significantly, again, significantly reduces long-term neurological deficits. This is the key right here. This study was done, this, this was done, uh, the one I just talked about, uh, was done repetition regimen, so it was multiple treatments over time, right? And then they looked at the brains later on. This study right here was low-level laser therapy given four hours following a traumatic brain injury. So we're talking really one session done after a brain injury within four hours. And what they found was that they looked at motor function, tests of motor function, and also to the, the lesions in the brain later on down the line. And by far, the, uh, the groups that had laser had significant long-term functional neurological benefit meaning their lesions were much smaller when they were finally looked at on autopsy, and their motor function uh, scores were much greater than the groups that did not. So this is why it's so key, um, particularly in concussion, where the sit and wait approach prevails, um, to get treatment immediately, because most people are just told, wait and see, you know, sit and wait, wait and see. Uh, you know, you'll get better, next thing you know, a week, a month, six months, a year. Uh, people are still dealing with symptoms. Now this becomes a lot harder to treat, and we're hearing all about um, CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which you know, looks like Alzheimer's, it looks like Parkinson's, it looks like a lot of other things in the brain because these brains have been damaged and injured but nothing's ever been done to help them along. So this is where laser can come in. Uh, research, Alzheimer's. Low-level laser therapy ameliorates disease progression in mouse model of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, this was a Molecular Neuroscience Journal, 2015. So basically, low-level laser as a therapeutic application in progressive stages of Alzheimer's. Progressive. So they're not looking at people at the beginning. They're looking at people down the line when they're in the throes of this horrible, horrible condition. So what it does is it helps with stem cell uh, production and big fancy word, amyloidogenic diseases. So basically what it does is it's, it's helping stem cell production to improve um, memory, particularly in the hippocampus, by producing new cells. So that's the laser stimulating that type of production. Uh, let's see, low-level laser therapy reduces uh, dendrite atrophy. So what happens is, uh, you know, the, the nerve cells get squeezed off by these plaques that develop in the brain over time. And that's why nerve cells don't communicate so well. There's other factors involved, but the fact is these tangles, these protein deposits, they start to strangle nerves and interrupt nerve conduction. So what happens is, Low-level laser therapy protects, protects against uh, beta amyloid-induced neurotoxicity. So it helps lessen the plaques, remove the plaques, so that these nerves don't get strangled. That's pretty cool. Uh, research may provide a feasible therapeutic approach to control the progression of Alzheimer's. Why not use it before it's too late? You know, if we can get lasers on bodies and brains before these things, my goodness. You know, we start stimulating the cell production beforehand while people can still you know, uh, interact socially and, and, and uh, you know, read books and do all these things that make us uniquely human. So uh, why, why not wait until it's too late? Um, the research, we're going to look at some other things. Um, Low-level laser therapy for depression and Alzheimer's. Uh, Journal of Neuropsychiatry, 2018. A lot of new studies, but also, too, this has gone back some time. Uh, so low-level laser therapy can enhance ATP biosynthesis, basically ATP production and utilization, so more energy in the cells, regulate mitochondrial homeostasis. The mitochondria is super important in any kind of disease process. So if we have better functioning mitochondria, we fight disease better, um, chronic disease is much less of a, a, a problem for us. And facilitate neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. All of this in one study. Um, effects of low level laser therapy and autism spectrum. They're looking at this quite a bit poor cell signaling, uh, poor uh, nutrient utilization, all kinds of things happen in autism that we're starting to really understand the mechanisms of. So that list of the effects of low-level laser therapy, almost all of those apply to autism. 
increased blood flow, increased cell signaling, increased oxygenation, on and on and on. So these lasers could be a, an effective tool for reducing irritability and other symptoms and behaviors associated with autistic spectrum disorder in children and adolescents with positive changes maintained over time. So that's the important thing too to understand. A lot of people say, well, you know, do the benefits go away when you stop using it? In most cases, no, uh, because certain therapeutic levels have been met. Just like if you're taking um, an antibiotic or a steroid <clears throat> or something like that, you have certain therapeutic levels that need to be met. And typically those changes coupled with other therapies will start to really take hold and, and not um, cause you to have to get laser all the time, right? Uh, possible application of laser in immunobiology. This was out of uh, Japan, this uh, major medical hospital in Japan. They have their own journal, uh, medical journal. But basically they looked at, and this is going back 1993, uh, low-level laser therapy, possible um, exciting role, both immunobiological therapy for diseases of the immune system and to activate and boost the normal reaction of the immune system components against harmful foreign bodies. So diseases against the immune system, autoimmune disorders, and fighting foreign invaders. Low-level laser therapy boosts um, the white blood cells that we need to, to have in response to viruses, bacteria, etc. So, this right here. Um, a couple more, I'm gonna go through these quick because I really wanna talk about this one here. Uh, benefits for non-pharmacological pain control. Um, lots and lots and lots of studies on pain. I only uh, included this one right here. But basically it reduces pain by lowering oxidative stress and the formation of edema and hemorrhage. You decrease inflammation, you increase antioxidants, all these good things, you increase oxygenation, blood flow, pain gets better. Um, also too, it's showing neurologically to have an impact on pain because chronic pain is uh, if most aren't aware of this, chronic pain is, is oftentimes much more of a brain issue than it is a body issue. So if you have back pain for 20 years, that pain is now hardwired in your nervous system, in your spinal cord, your brain. And what happens is it's not just a matter of, you know, getting therapy for the back anymore, or taking a pill to cut down the pain in the back, because that pain is hardwired in the brain. So this is where it's showing for chronic pain, uh, laser has tremendous benefits over traditional therapies. In some cases, even the physical therapies, because now people are getting stronger, they're showing better function on tests, yet they still have pain, because the pain is in the brain. It's not in the head. Many doctors, oh, it's all in your head. Um, that's a bad way to go about it, but the pain is in your brain, which is in your head, so technically the pain is in your head to a certain degree. Uh, Low-level laser therapy ameliorates disease progression in multiple sclerosis, the Journal of Autoimmunity. This is huge. Low-level laser therapy blocked neuroinflammation. Blocked neuroinflammation. It's so difficult to decrease inflammation in, on the other side of the blood-brain barrier, in the brain, in the spinal cord. It's so difficult to reduce inflammation, but this does it. Um, especially lymphocytes were increased, as well as preventing demyelination of the spinal cord. Preventing demyelination. That's what MS is. The outer covering of the nerve starts to wither away and die off and get eaten up, so to speak. Um, and this can potentially stop that process from the Journal of Autoimmunity. That is big. Effective low-level laser stimulation on EEG. I pulled this paper out specifically because EEG is something we do a lot of. We do a lot of uh, EEG, quantitative EEG. And the fact is, um, there's not many looking at lasers having an impact on brainwave activity actual brainwave activity. You hear about delta, <coughs> theta, alpha, beta, gamma, all these different brainwaves from slow to fast waves. The fact is when we deliver laser therapy, we add a frequency of um, essentially pulsation, if you will, uh, or stimulation to the wavelength of light and to the power of that laser. So now we have a frequency component. There's a lot of lasers that are continuous without, uh, you know, and those are the ones that do the cutting and do the damage to tissue and things like that. The fact is, with low-powered lasers that we can manipulate the frequency on, so we can go from zero hertz all the way up to hundreds and hundreds of hertz. All a hertz is is cycles per second. So if we're delivering, you know, 10 hertz activity, it's very, very, um, you know, kind of slow pulsations, if you will. That's more consistent with certain types of activity in the brain, like alpha brainwave activity. Um, so we can start to deliver a laser now in specific patterns to 
uh, either mimic or replicate certain brainwave activity or to interrupt other types of brainwave activity that might be stuck. Uh, and this study right here out of um, China, effective low-level laser stimulation on EEG. This is right up my alley, and uh, this is actually what we're starting to do, looking at EEG pre- and post-laser therapy. Because in my opinion, this is where it's at, particularly for ADHD, anxiety, um, addiction, brain injury, etc. We need to see that we're making changes in, in severely challenged brainwave activity in these individuals, particularly if they're taking laundry lists of medication. Just had a, a brain injury case come in the other day, 15 different medications. That has a massive impact on brainwave activity. So if we can start to regulate through mechanisms like this and other types of therapy, uh, well, you know, the impacts that could have on reducing dependence on certain types of medications. So I'm going to pull out this little piece right here because this particular study looked at low-level laser stimulation was able to increase the power of alpha brainwave activity. Alpha brainwave activity is, most people have heard of this, this is kind of the relaxed, focus, in the zone, meditation type of brainwave. This is what people seek when they do meditation, when they go on retreats, when they just sit and relax, when they disconnect from the distractions of the day, which most people aren't disconnecting from anymore. This is super important because a lot of people have very low power alpha activity now. They may have enough of it, but it's just very low power. The laser is increasing the alpha rhythms, the power of the alpha rhythms. This is super important because anxiety, panic, obsessive compulsive disorder, phobias, addiction. Most of these individuals can't, I won't say can't, because I hold that all hope and, and they will eventually get there. They have the most incredibly difficult time sitting quietly. So if we can't get somebody to meditate off the bat or do biofeedback or neurofeedback because their brain is just going a mile a minute because they have so much beta activity and very low power alpha activity, what can we do for them? We can do laser. Now we can do things that are more passive in nature that now can allow them to sit and do neurofeedback or sit and do meditation. Or maybe we can even do the laser while they're doing meditation or neurofeedback, coupling therapies. This is where we start to see some really awesome things happening. So increase the power of alpha uh, rhythms and theta waves in the back of the brain where these things start to, uh, where these things are formed. And the amplitude, uh, the, the power of beta activities in the anterior head regions was decreased. I want to show you this uh, in a minute. I'm going to show you a slide to show you what that looks like. But basically, EEG changes were comparable to those in meditation. So we're basically inducing meditation. That's a pretty cool thing with a safe and effective therapy that has no side effects. That's pretty cool. So right here, this is what I want to show you. This is a, a, an example of a brain map or quantitative EEG that we did here. This is an individual... Um, uh, marijuana, alcohol, you know, basically anything this girl would have in front of her, she would do. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, Ritalin, whatever, she would take whatever was in front of her just to feel different because her and her own brain um, was not very comfortable. You know, they, her and her brain were not comfortable living together. So she needed to have that escape and that comfort of different types of influences. And usually it was more the, the kind of theta producing influences like alcohol and um, uh, and alpha producing influences like alcohol and marijuana. Uh, but she would do some other things as well. So the deal was, this indicates low alpha brainwave activity. This right here indicates increased beta activity in the front of the brain. This is a very classic ADHD or anxiety profile. These are all red with delta and theta or slow wave activity because of the medication she was on. She was taking anti-anxiety agents. Uh, clonazepam mm -hmm. in particular. And that has this kind of impact on slowing the brain down. Somebody's anxious, what do you do? You slow it down. That's what happens a lot of, in a lot of these cases. But the fact is, low alpha, high frontal beta, high frontal gamma. This is somebody whose brain is super, super anxious. She could not sit in a room by herself. She could not meditate at the time. Um, and we did not do laser with this particular individual. I did want to show you that the pattern that that study was just talking about reducing, adding more power to alpha, decreasing this frontal beta and gamma activity, because now we know we can do it through laser. We did other methods with this particular individual and she's come a long way, and she actually went on a meditation retreat last I heard about six months ago. Um, so that's pretty cool. Not From not being able to sit quietly with your own mind to going on a meditation retreat where you're meditating for hours and hours a day. And uh, that can be facilitated through laser. So. 
Uh, the FX635, this is what we use here, and I'll just kind of show you real quick, but this is a uh, just an amazing instrument. And what we have is um, three diodes, basically three laser diodes. They can be, be uh, positioned in any manner, people lying down, sitting up, um, face down, face up. It really just depends on what we're looking to do as far as stimulating the body and or brain. And um, the cool thing was, and I didn't talk about the... Um, that EEG study I just talked about, laser impacting EEG, what they were doing was they were impacting all of that brainwave activity and they didn't even put the laser on the head. They were doing it through the hand, okay? They were doing the laser through the hand on, and that was designed more like, um, it was done in China, and they were looking at certain acupuncture points. And they were delivering the laser through certain acupuncture points at the frequencies, at the power, uh, at the wavelengths that this particular device is very close to. Uh, in that range, low level cold laser therapy. But again, through the hand, they had these benefits on electrical output in the brain. Uh, that's pretty spectacular because we can go transcranial, we can deliver these things directly through skin and bone, but uh, we can have the impact really anywhere in the body, uh, utilizing laser anywhere in the body. So we have these different diodes we can position, uh, put on different parts of the body, on the head, etc. And uh, what we do is just use different, and we'll talk about frequently asked questions and things like that, uh, but different periods of time, uh, different frequencies, uh, all of these things add up to, uh, all of these clinical decisions add up to better outcomes when we can really understand the case in front of us and deliver a laser therapy specific for that individual. So um, there's really, there are, you know, what would be considered cookie cutter protocols for pain and things like that. But when we're dealing with, uh, you know, functions of the brain and other functions of the body, we really need to understand how these frequencies are impacting um, the, the, the neurological system. So, uh, what I want to do is just go back to this for a moment. And that is my daughter right there getting some laser on her head. Um, she absolutely loves it. And, uh, you know, she has some struggles with attention and focus. And uh, even some, uh, you know, on occasion when she gets stressed, she gets some light uh, you know, kind of ticks, you know, she'll just, it's not a, a full-blown Tourette's type of syndrome, but she will just get these nervous ticks. And the fact is, laser helps her not have them. Um, so it's a pretty cool thing that we can uh, implement these therapies and not have to go medication routes or things like that. She's not even a candidate for medication, but it's just uncomfortable for her to have to deal with it. And naturally, the anxiety from that type of problem can lead to full-blown anxiety, panic, obsessive compulsive tendencies when she gets older. So again, you know, just treating the brain before the problems arise. Uh, so right now, FDA approvals on the back and the heel pain, other approvals in the works now for um, Alzheimer's and autism. So um, specifics and frequently asked questions. The typical length of a session is anywhere from a minute to 20 minutes. Uh, we will do some that um, will focus on the brainstem through uh, through the mouth, we can actually do up the nose, we can do um, on different parts of the face, the neck, to impact spinal cord and brainstem. So um, one to 20 minutes, depending on where it is and what type of uh, therapy we wanna deliver. Number of session usually varies between 10 and 30. Uh, most people are around the 10 mark, uh, 10, 15. And um, we like to do 10 minimum because you, know, you can do one here and there, but the fact is, unless it's something like a wound or a, um, you know, we're even seeing things now like um, toenail fungus, you know, going away in, you know, four or five. And we're not, we don't see those kinds of things. But now people are asking us, hey, can you, can you put the laser on this and, 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 you know, work with that? And, you know, sure enough, the literature's out there. It supports it. So if it supports it, we will, you know, we'll go for it as long as it's within our scope. So, so for things like that, it might require less visits. We'll just kind of do things until they're better. Um, but usually 10 session minimum, nearly all ages and conditions. Cost of session ranges, um, you know, what happens, you'll look, it's anywhere from about 50 to $250 is the kind of nationwide range, that's a big range. Uh, so we want it to be kind of in the middle or towards the low end. But the fact is, uh, there's something here that you won't have in most facilities and it's this type of thing. Um, clinical oversight by functional neurologists. The fact is we're not just putting lasers on and hoping things are getting better. Uh, we're treating these like any other clinical decisions we make through EEG, through cognitive testing, through um, eye movement testing, on and on and on. You know, laboratory analysis. So we have to look at these cases one by one and not again do cookie cutter types of protocols. So we're about 100 to 125 per session depending on the number of sessions. Uh, there's a $195 initial examination fee because we sit down, we have to go through all aspects of history. Somebody may come in with 
brain injury, but we need to know everything that's brought them up to that point in their life. Is it just one or was it 10? Uh, you know, the, I told you about somebody the other day, uh, we were looking at with the, the uh, 14 or 15 medications. Well, the fact is what we thought was initially one injury turned out to be about 10 head injuries. Uh, and the fact is each one kind of led to the next because balance, eye movements, all these things were off. Uh, so we have to get into history and understand what's going on there. Um, also too, we may combine with other therapies. Most of our therapies are not standalone therapies. They're all together as a program, as a um, you know, logical sequence of what we do when we see the conditions that we see. Laser, however, can act as a standalone therapy, but the fact is as most people are going through laser, we want to start coupling laser with cognitive-based activities, with physical-based activities, with neurofeedback, with other things. Um, because the fact is, when we can combine therapies, the results are often exponentially greater than if they were by themselves. Um, so they can be coupled with other therapies. And, um, you know, people say, does it hurt? No, nope, no pain, no side effects that we know of at this point. And these things have been looked at for a long time. Um, anybody who's watching, anybody who's with us, uh, we have, we're waiving the um, initial evaluation. We don't typically do these types of things, but uh, we just really want people to had the experience of, of going through the laser therapy for whatever it is that they're dealing with. Um, so we're waiving the 195 initial examination fee. And you can just use this light heals the brain code when you call or email us. Uh, here's our phone number to schedule. And um, I think we are at the point of questions. Do we have any questions? Mm. I hear some hmms. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of information, I know. I know it is. So are you the functional neurologist? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Am I the functional neurologist? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, and we'll just check quick if there's any on Facebook. I don't see any for right now. Not right now. If you're on Facebook and you have questions, please put them in the comments, and we will go ahead, and in the next day or two, we'll go ahead and get those answered for you. Um, but we've covered quite a bit. You can go back through the video again. You can go to our website, um, apexbraincenters.com, and there's a, a page on photobiomodulation talking about what we talked about here. Uh, we're, we'll certainly be doing more talks on this. Um, here's the phone number to call us. We do free consultations all the time if anybody has any questions. Um, and then here we're on pretty much every social media outlet and you'll find all kinds of good info on laser and other modalities that we utilize. But uh, if there's nothing else, I, I thank you all for being here and uh, thanks for coming. Take care.